Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We are just about to go to sleep for the night. Crucially, we have a fraction under $410,000, which means that this week we should be able to run along to the shop and pick up this bad boy right here. The Scorpion King. There are a couple of others that are available that we could go and get, but I don't really want to get them. Um, so it's, it's that one right there that I would like to get. And I have gone and looked it up, and apparently there are quite a number of um, Ponzi outlets in the US. They are reasonably common around the US. I don't know if they're the most common machine. I, I don't know very much about it. But there are enough of them there that it can sort of... It's, it's not like a specialist, really unusual site to see a Ponzi machine working in the US. So I'm quite happy with my choice. I know it's a little bit more pricey than some of the others, but I'd, I still would prefer to use this one. So we're going to go with this one. 410,000 when we get it. And I did... Yeah, I haven't actually got it here. There was another one. I had a Ponzi Buffalo. Um, I've got the mod, and I'll have to make sure that I've got it uh, added to the list. So it, it loads in. Um, it's got an auto-load feature on it, so that we can have the, the Ponzi Buffalo sort of working up and down the hills. And we don't have to use the crane arm on it. We could just do our usual set it to 30 times speed, and we could have the auto-loader working on it instead. And then bring that down to the bottom of the hill, and then use other things to load up. And I would like to continue using this trailer, but what I'd also like to do is I would like to get a truck to pull said trailer. Now, there are a number of different options. I've been told that the cab over designs are... You do get them in the US. They're just a little less common than several of the others. We've got some Max over here, although they're rather expensive. Um, I've got a number of Kenworth... Oh, there we go. I've got a number of Kenworth options right here. And I've got... You you got different racks on the back. We got day cab hook lift. We got sleeper with triple axle, sleeper double, sleeper with a hook lift, uh, day cab triple axle, day cab double, and and so on. You 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 get the idea here. We we've got a, a number of different options with uh, this Kenworth C five hundred. Now that's one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. But I sort of thought something like that would be quite cool to use with our trailer. Because it means if we're using that with the trailer, we can divide this in half. And we can put, uh, we can get six meter log lengths. And we can put one stack at the front, one stack at the back. And then travel with those all together over to the mill. Which would be particularly good once we start to move further away. Once we move up into the hills or um, sort of further away over the other side. Because the other thing I was thinking of is where are we going to buy land next? You know, we sort of... That one there is or $365,000. If I go for that around the sawmill, you've got to buy everything, and that's nearly a million dollars. So I was actually thinking that would be the next chunk of land that we buy, and that's a little bit further away from the mill. It's not that far to go, but if we're having to do that with the tractor, it's fairly slow. So if we've got the Ponzi... Uh, scorpion and we've also got the truck with the trailer on the back i think it's going to make things a whole lot different and there's one other thing i wanted to show you very quickly and that is a new pack that i've just been shown on the um discord somebody showed me a link for it so that's the one that we've got at the moment and then there's a pack that has got these three trailers in it, right? You've got the, that one there is a 12-meter trailer, so it's the same as the shortest one. You've got a 15-meter and you've got a 20-meter one over here. Now, I have had a quick look at them, and I don't know very much about them at the moment, but it is possible to unfold these so that they spread out a bit, and we could put 6-meter logs down through. You could have three stacks at 6-meter lengths. So that would use up 18 meters of the 20-meter trailer, and... Um, then you could take that huge long trailer. But I do wonder if that one would be a little bit too long for this map. Uh, but the 15 meter one, I think that could work out quite nicely. Uh, that, that would do the job well. And we could use 7 meter logs on that one. Or we could go with the 12 meter one here. Now we got that, that's just the standard one there. Uh, but this one, 
is just like that. Whereas if we go to this 12 meter one over here, crucially, it has a rear hitch on it. So we could actually have two of these trailers in succession with the Kenworth truck pulling it. And we would have four loaded stacks of six meter logs. And that I think could be quite cool. Um, but anyway, I've rattled on about that for quite long enough. Um, so we're going to sleep for 11 hours like that. It's going to take us through. And it was, so we've, we've lost obviously nearly 10,000 with loan interests and everything else. And we are ready to get going with the morning work. So we're just going to check our sheet. We need to get another 50 grand. We want to get that uh, Ponzi Scorpion first. That's, that's our first thing that we want to get. And once we've got that one, then we can start moving on. There's another mod that I've also installed, and that is this one here. Tech Farm, would you like to pay $4,300 to install a new pipeline to allow direct filling of the sheep water trough? Uh, 18 liters per 18 dollars per day and water is free now that would be absolutely wonderful you it starts doing the installation and I don't know when the I think it's tomorrow that it would start the installation but that's another five thousand dollars which is obviously going to put us back a little bit so I'd rather leave that just for a minute. I want to concentrate on getting that timber cut and getting the logs sold. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to hook on this one. And I'm going to tidy up the sheep. We've got to do this. That's sort of one of our daily chores that we need to get done. So we will do that. So let's just unhitch that one there. And then I'll go and get the fork on and we will tidy up the sheep there. Then we will go straight over with the timber runner and we will start doing some more work with the logs. Once we've got the Ponzi Scorpion, once that one is here, then and only then will we start thinking about um, some extras for the sheep. But what I'm also thinking of doing is changing over the... Um, uh, the, 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 the thingy. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of changing over the, the thingy, the, um, um, timber, the, the timber runner, the timber runner one. I'm thinking of changing that one over as kind of one of the next things that we do. Not, uh, once we've bought the scorpion. Because one of the things that that one will allow you to do is, I think, you can actually alter the position of the loading of the logs without having to have a truck pulling it so we'd be able to do that with the tractor we could set on six meter lengths rather than eight meter lengths from what i've been able to find out six seven and eight meter lengths get you roughly the same amount of money coming in anything below six meter is not good you don't want it below six meters but anything six to eight meters it might be between six and nine meters is actually fine but you don't want to be going below uh, six meters. But if we can do six meters, that would work out quite nicely because it means that we'd be able to get two loads onto that trailer without any issues. But we can't do that one and the dolly. It doesn't work. It, um, there's issues with the dolly working properly on this particular trailer. Um, but the other trailers, I think they work all right using a dolly. I was just looking at the controls in the actual file, and it does look like I might be able to use the other trailer with a dolly and a tractor, which would be quite good if we could do that fairly early on. Uh, the other thing that I want to just quickly double check now, growth. We still want to let the grass grow for one more growth sort of session. It, it, needs, to, it needs to grow once more before we can start doing bales, so... We will stick with doing timber. I was thinking of like doing some mowing this week and having that to get our earn our final bit of cash. But as the grass still needs to grow, we'd have to fast forward time quite a bit. I mean, I could go and do that. We could do that and uh, cut down trees at the same time. While I've got the tractor running up and down doing the mowing, we could be doing some cutting of trees but I don't think I will I think probably the fastest way for us to earn this remaining 50,000 that we need would be to just cut down trees cut down trees as fast as I can 
and get them loaded onto here and then get them over to that sawmill. Once we've done that, we can then get the tree harvester back. And what I think I'll do, actually, is in order to go over to the sawmill, I will go over with... Oh, no. I was just going to say, I'll go with the tractor and uh, haul this trailer and everything over. Uh, but no, we don't want to do that because we're not going to have any money to change the trailers over. So, no, I don't want to do that. I'll walk over. Th I'll walk over there the first time. Right. I'll switch you off. And let's get back to it. So, you are familiar with this. We spent all last week doing this. And I spent the first several weeks of this series just doing this. So, when we eventually do finish this series, and I don't know how many episodes we'll end up doing... But when we eventually finish doing this series, my plan is to, um, well, I, I'm not quite sure. I, I, I do want to do another hardcore series. I, I like the hardcore series. It's, it's a bit of variation from the standard series, and it gives us a, a different approach to things as well, which is good, but I won't do it quite like this. We, we probably won't go for a straight logging map, or if we do... I will start it slightly differently so that we're not restricted quite so much at the beginning and having to do quite as much in the way of um, hand felling timber. But it's not just the hand felling of timber. It's the creating the fields to start with because that's the bit that really, really took us a long time. Um, so we've done that once. I don't think we need to go over and do the whole thing again. But we'll worry about that later. We, we, we've got a long way to go before we finish this series. This series we've got to get a large animal pen of every type of animal. And we've got to be able to feed said animals properly. Now that's not a small thing to be able to do. We've got to be able to get one of every pen. Um, excluding horses. And... We've got to have all of the feed that they need. Now, a large pen full of cows needs a huge amount of silage and hay and straw all mixed in to go in there for bedding and for feed and for everything else. There is a massive amount that they need to do that. Pigs the same. There's a whole host of different crops that we've got to put in for them. Um... I did say that I might consider not putting in root crops for them. That is the only thing that I might do is not do root crops for the pigs. We'll see how we feel about root crops when we get sort of to that point. We could be a bit fed up with it by that point. Um, in which case we may not bother. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. But we definitely got to get all the rest of the stuff in for the pigs. So like all of the, the corn and the wheat and the beans and, and all of those things. They, they've all got to go in there. So... We're still going to be having to do quite a bit of it. Uh, it's just the root crop. Um, I mean, yeah, we would only need one harvest and be one small harvest. And by that point, we'll probably... We probably won't have too much trouble being able to afford just that last little bit. Why aren't you grabbing the end of it? Let's just chop the end of the tree off then. Let's do it like that. And we'll take you off. And then... All right, let's chop that one in the middle like that. There we go. Fairly long log that one is, but I still think it's going to be all right. Then I will go to this one right here. And I'm going to move forwards. We've got a big clump of trees over in front of us. Um, so we can take those out without too much trouble. If we can get these... If we can get two trailer loads loaded absolutely completely to the gunnels, then, yeah, we'll be able to make a, just enough from two loads to do it. But I don't think we're going to be able to do that. The only thing that I might consider in order to save us having to do a third load is if we do make enough from two loads, I might possibly consider uh, taking the X lifter over to the dealership and selling that one although even doing that i'd then still i'd then have to drive back two machines rather than one machine which is not something that i can really do um yes we could do the whole delivery thing where we lease a vehicle um or a trailer and we had deliver the ponzi scorpion over to us like that however 
The only issue I've got with doing that is that it's going to take um, a significant amount of additional cash to be able to do it. And I'm not sure that I really want to do that at the moment. I mean, yes... As some people have pointed out, it would be a fairly realistic thing to have to do to go and get these um, additional ones because what you're having to do is we're in we're, we're sort of in the middle of nowhere and that does come with its own issues with delivery charges. So maybe we should be allowing for that every time. So I'm, I'm still I'm in an iron about that as to whether I should have to lease something every time or if we do it when we lease uh, sorry buy uh, when we buy something um, should we have to lease something to do the delivery every single time or is it sort of a like if we buy two or more machines at once or something like that um, I mean I like the idea of it but I'm, I'm still sort of torn on the, the whole procedure with it whether or not I should because Mainly because the extra money. It's it's quite expensive to have to go and do that. And I'm not sure that I really want to have to spend that much extra time cutting down logs by hand and uh, delimbing them like this and then chopping them up. When the sooner we get onto the Ponzi Scorpion, the better. Right, if we get that thing here, we'll be chopping down these logs, chopping them up, having them in great big piles quite sure I was just sort of um, I was actually thinking about the controls just then what control set am I going to be using on the Ponzi Scorpion um, but uh, I'll worry about that in a bit and I do think I'm gonna go with the six meter logs I'm gonna start cutting everything to six meter logs I did there was quite a bit of data that had been researched in FS17 about optimal log lengths um, and that was done over I think people took like um, 10 trees, 10 base game trees or 10 trees of varying sizes and cut them into, well, I think that's probably all right, cutting it like that, uh, cut them into various lengths. Um, that There are 10 trees of various different sizes, so just an assortment of different sizes. And then got the tree harvester and cut them on four, five, six, seven, and eight meter lengths. Anything longer than that, you need to use a mod for anyway. I don't have a mod at the moment that allows me to set the tree harvester to longer than... Um, there we go, chop that one. Uh, anything longer than eight meters. So up to eight meters would be sort of the, the optimal thing. And there was a lot of data about this in F17, and anywhere from 6 meters up to 9 meters gave you a, a better return. Now, if you just left the tree as a whole log, you would lose money. You'd be far better off just chopping it in half, even if you didn't do anything else. Uh, but one of the other crucial things that did sort of come up was... And this was pointed out today on Discord by Patreon, actually. Uh, Patreon Gracemark was talking about this, and he said he remembers that one of the crucial things about Timber was that he, as far as he remembers, the crucial length was between 6 and 8 metres, or 6 and 9 metres, something like that. Um, and... So there was very little difference between those numbers. And there was maybe a slight variation with perhaps 7 or 8 metres being the true sweet spot. But it was such a small amount of variation in those numbers that it didn't really matter. Um, the, but the one crucial thing was it was better to have a longer log than a shorter log. So if you had a choice between a 9 metre log or chopping it in half and having two 4.5 metre logs... It was better to stay with the 9 meter log. Uh, same with the 10 meter. It was better to have 10 meters rather than having uh, two 5 meter logs. Um, because you had a short. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was the way round it was. You, you had less of a penalty being over length than you did being under length, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the way. This is where he goes into the comment section on his video and says, uh, actually, Frith, it was the complete opposite of that. It, you had less of a penalty for being shorter. I don't think you did. I think longer logs were the preferred medium, if at all possible. 
Now, we've got a little stand of trees right here. I reckon if we take those down, we should then be just about ready for going and doing some ferrying of logs. Um, quite how many we can ferry, I'm not quite sure. I'm hoping that we'll be approaching our two load limit on this. So we'll take that one down there, and then I will go and skin this one off. Like that. There we go. Right, and that one can just be chopped in half. There. So, obviously, the really long logs are different to the short logs. And if you always use logs that are exactly... The trees are exactly the same length. So, if you do planted FS19 trees and you let them all grow to full length, then there is only going to be one optimal length to cut them because every single one of them will cut to exactly the same length and exactly the same number of logs because every tree will grow to exactly the same height. So really, that's not sort of what, the, the, what data you'd want. You'd want an assortment of trees of various heights and then go through and cut everything down at the same length so that you can sort of get an idea of what overall is going to give you the um, the most benefit. I'm pretty sure, however, that um, per meter, um, you are looking at still between six and eight meters. Um, I, I think six meters is still an, within an acceptable range. Um, too much shorter than that, and yes, you, you are going to start seeing some fair penalties. And very long, you're also going to see um, more significant penalties, but uh, quite what the numbers are, I don't know. And strangely, it's something that, like all of the other prices, you, you get an exact price and you can figure it all out, right? It's, it's very easy to see what your prices are for most of it. However, giants always seem to be very sort of guarded about letting us know what money we get for our trees, and... I've never really quite understood why they're so cagey about letting us know what the, the, what the prices are. I, I, I can't see that it would hurt anything. Anyway, it, it, it doesn't really matter. We, we can always figure it out. We can just do a little series of experiments here and there. Or someone else can do some, a series of experiments. And I will talk about it in my video and give credit where it is due. Um, I, I quite like that approach. I've had that approach taken with a number of different issues that I've come up with. And... It's quite fantastic that everybody else would go along and do the testing for me, and then I just read out the results. This is something I like. This, this is definitely a process that I can get on board with. It involves far less work for me than most other approaches, which is pretty good. Right, tidy that one up. Uh, that's actually a fairly long one there, so I'll cut it there. And then I'll cut it once more. Back over here. There. Right, we've now got a lot of trees all chopped down. So we'll go whizzing over here to our tractor. Start this one up. And now it starts on the left-hand side, doesn't it? So we're already on... We would already be on the left-hand side, so I just want to press B. And I want to change that up to 30 times speed. And we can start loading up a load of timber, I'm hoping. Is it going to work? Yes. Fantastic. Right. I will run along the top edge here. It's it's a little bit more level up here than what we're normally used to. At the moment, I'm getting some fairly short logs. But not too bad. There's a lot of tree stumps right here. And until I get a few more bits of timber actually onto this trailer, it is in danger of sort of rattling some of these. Nope. Now they're sort of pinning each other down. That's what you need, is you need them to sort of pin each other in place, and then you don't need to worry about it too much. But they don't to start with. They just kind of fall across each other and, and don't um, load properly. Um, and then they fall off onto the side. They, they slip in between the, um, the uprights. And that's the bit that I don't want. I don't want them slipping in between the uprights and uh, falling out onto the floor. So it just makes a mess. We don't want a mess. Uh, great demand at Universal Selling. Now, uh, so far, I've never actually seen any price. Oh, here we go. Great demand right there. So I think that's... Is that one grass? Or is that hay? I'm never quite sure which way round those are. But anyway, 288 for silage is 
a reasonable price. This is not a brilliant price, but 288 is a reasonable price for silage. We've got some long old logs there in places. So we go down the hill like this. Slowly does it. Go too fast. There. And then I need to start going along the bottom here. We're not going to have enough for two big loads. We have got two loads. But not two great big loads. We've got two medium sized loads. Well, I got one big load here. Doing too bad with this load, actually. That one's coming along quite nicely. Now, if I bring this one up here and we go up the hill like this, I can get the last few logs on this load up there. So long, so long as I can get up there. This, this is the bit that we really struggle with. So I'm... I will go away and I'll do a couple of tests on the other trailer that is available. And if that one works all right with the tractor and dolly, that'll be one of the next things that we buy um, after we bought the Ponzi Scorpion. And then after that, I want to buy another tractor. Now, a number of people said that actually they thought it would be much better if I was to get... Don't sell this tractor because we're not going to get a massive amount back from this tractor anyway. So keep this tractor... And get another one. Right, now that is a fair load. I think it's fair to say that that is a fair load. So we'll put that onto there and we will slow the time down again. And we've got just enough time, I think, to get over to the mill and sell this lot right here. Once that is done, I've then got a few bits over there that I need to deal with. And not a lot else. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be enough for a full load over there. So I think that we are going to have to cut down just a few more trees just to make up the final bit that we want. And even if the grass does come right now, I'm going to wait until after we've got the Ponzi Scorpion. And before I start doing any uh, mowing or anything like that. Uh, we will be doing this time round silage across everything. So the whole field will be done as silage. We've got... Just trying to think. I reckon that probably buying the new tractor would be fairly high on our list at this point. Uh, because a new tractor will be able to do a better job at pulling this trailer. And, well, obviously I, I want to change this trailer over as soon as possible to the uh, the other version of it. So long as the other version works all right, I've still got to test that one a little bit. But um, we can still use this tractor for doing the mowing and stuff like that. And we'll be able to use the other tractor for pulling the trailer. Because if we've got two stacks of six meter logs on that other trailer, it's going to be a fair old weight. It's going to be even more weight than we got on this. And I don't think this tractor is even going to be able to pull it. I think it's going to get to the point where this tractor is just not going to be able to cope with it. So what do we get here? 20,600 from there. And I've still got some more logs. Sell those. That's 20 worth. $22,000 from there. So if we get exactly the same again, I don't think we're going to quite make our target of 450. Or 448, I think it is. But we're not going to be far off. We're going to be pretty close, I think, to that. Now, unfortunately, I can't go and take the X-Lifter and just sell it straight from where we are. I'd have to actually transport it over to the dealership in order to be able to sell it. Now, that would be like an extra couple of thousand. So instead of worrying about that, we will simply make sure that we have enough trees up there to cut down. So we'll go whizzing up through. Ooh. No, I can't do that, can I? I was, I was just thinking, maybe I could sell a couple bales of hay, and maybe that would be enough. But one, the price is ridiculously poor for selling hay. Um, and two, and more crucially, I'm only allowed to sell silage or hay uh, minimum of one full load at a time. And because I don't have a full load to sell, that's not going to be an option for us. Which is a little bit unfortunate. So I, I'm going to have to cut down more trees. Definitely going to have to cut down some more trees. Let's get let's let's haul this one up the hill. And and yes, it, it's going to be absolutely brilliant if we can get a more powerful tractor. Uh, I asked you last week to tell me what brand of machinery most of you wanted me to focus on. Um, uh, 
if if I'm going to go for one in particular and sort of focus on that brand, um, or should I just, you know, maybe I should just go for a mixed uh, mixed bag. Uh, a few people just said, well, you know, go, go for what you can get. Some people said that um, go for the cheapest because we are quite hard up, so we wouldn't be going for just one particular brand all the time. Uh, a few people said John Deere, a few people said Case, and a few people said New Holland. Um, Case and New Holland, interestingly enough, are owned by the same company. Um, and uh, then you've got uh, Agco, which deal with the likes of Massey Ferguson, Fence, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, some people said I should try going for Cat, although we don't really have very much in the way of small cat machinery available. Um, I'd like to. I, th I think it could be quite cool, but I'm actually, personally, those of you who watch the time-lapse series will know by now that I'm going to be focusing on Case and New Holland in the time-lapse series, but I am seriously considering sort of putting Case as a priority on this series as well, purely because uh, I haven't really done anything with Case anywhere, so I don't think it would hurt to have the time-lapse and this series focusing on Case machinery, because uh, I haven't really done that before. I've mostly focused on um, Agco brands. Um, uh, done a little bit of John Deere, so I'm sort of thinking that for this particular series here, we'll do a mix of John Deere and um, John Deere, Case, and New Holland will be sort of the, the primary brands because those are typical U.S. brands anyway. Um, Case is bigger than New Holland, I believe, in the U.S. I could have that wrong. I could I could easily have that wrong. Um, but as far as I know, Case and New Holland are, um, you know, they're, they're both big brands, but I think Case is bigger than New Holland. Um, although I'm, I'm not quite sure, even though it's the same company that make them. Um, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm not 100% on that, but I, I was sort of thinking using the two. I thought that, that would work out fairly well. Use both of them together, and also throw in some John Deere ones as well. We can get some second-hand... There are a few mods already that have got some second-hand machinery sort of covering those. And I think both of those will be pretty good. Um, both viable options, I think, to make the series work. We will go for generally older machinery if we can get it. But I'm not going to limit myself just to that. The next tractor I get... Um, most likely will be one of the older machines, but I'm not going to rule out something a bit newer and shinier. We'll, we'll just sort of see what options we got. And we've got another one of these trees. Let me just deal with this one a second. There we go. So that goes to about there. And then now what you've got to do is you've got to find where the edge of the tree is, which is there. So we got one short length there which should be able to be picked up by the auto loader and then we've got this one right here i'll bring that one down over here and then i'll dump it into the back of the trailer once we get our next load and i'll drop that one there so that's one of those weird trees that turns up from there every now and then there we go we'll drop that one down there and We'll put that one in. But anyway, that's all we got time for today. So if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.